Hello, just Jamie here. Thanks for checking out my latest emulation video. If you've not yet liked and subscribed, please like and subscribe and remember to hit the notifications bell. I have tons of new videos and just general retro content coming. Uh, so do do that if you enjoy what you see today. Let's get on with this. So I'm looking at uh, emulation for Sega today and this is specifically for pretty much the 8-bit, 16-bit era plus 32-bit era. So uh, the emulator I'm using for this today is going to be Kega Fusion. It's been around on the internet for a very long time and I'm using the latest version for this that I'm aware of. So let's just get on with this and get you up and running, play some classics. So first things first, if you follow the link in my description, it will take you to this website. This is Kega Fusion and it's going to give you a little bit of background information such as what Kega works on. Uh, in this tutorial, it's going to be on Windows. I'm using Windows 11. It will likely work on uh, older versions of Windows. It also works on Linux and Mac OS X. So uh, if we look here, the latest release date was 12 years ago. From what I've seen of it and what I've watched other YouTubers do, it's um, a fully stable working emulator. So if we just scroll down a little bit more, we're going to find some download options. So as I was saying, this is going to work with Mac and Linux. So let's just download the Windows version for this tutorial, which is uh, currently version 3.64. Just left click on that. So that's downloaded, it will just take a few seconds dependent on your internet connection. So uh, just go back to the desktop here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a new folder. So I'm going to just go down to new and I'm going to click on folder and I'm going to just simply call this folder Sega. So with the zipped archive folder I've just downloaded, I'm going to just drag this onto my desktop and then drag it inside the newly created Sega folder. Just open up that Sega folder, highlight it, and if you right click on it, we can extract it. Um, I use WinRAR, you might be using 7-Zip or a similar type of software to extract your zipped folders. So if I just go to extract here, we get a few different contents. We can now delete this archive zipped folder we just downloaded. So we got a few different things in there. We got video codex subfolder. If we go into video codex, that's just additional software which runs MP4 uh, files, which is video for some of the systems such as uh, Sega CD. So if we just open up Fusion now, it's a very nostalgic looking feeling when you open up this emulator, the old school fuzzy screen. If we go directly to file, you're going to notice at the top, as I was saying, this is going to cover several different old Sega systems. So let's just start off with Master System. So if we just left click on Master System ROM. And from here, you need to locate where your Master System game is on your computer. So in my case, it's on my desktop. If I just go to desktop and if I scroll down to Master System, and bear in mind to run Master System Games, the naming convention is going to be .sms, uh, .sega Master System. If these are uh, titled anything else as extensions, uh, they won't work, so they need to be uh, named how I've got them or how the website says they got to be named. So to run this, just double left click. And there we have it. So as always, I've got my trusty PlayStation 3 controller. It doesn't work. So clearly you're gonna to wanna to be playing these games. So if we just go to options here, if we go to set config, and if we go over to controllers, we got multiple Sega controllers we can set up. So right now, as I'm uh, using a Sega Master System game, I'm gonna just go down to the bottom where it says Master System and Game Gear controllers and I'm going to emulate port 1, which is player 1. If I just go over to use, it's currently at keyboard, which keyboard isn't great for playing games. So we're going to left click on that. And my PlayStation 3 controller is here, which is titled Xbox 360. 
Uh, if we just go to define, if you look here at the bottom, it says press button, direction or keyboard to use up. So I'm going to just press up and then down, down on my D-pad, left on my D-pad, right on my D-pad, and then button one, button two, uh, start is just going to be start. And that's it, uh, master system. Only had a couple of buttons really. And if you recall, uh, the pause button was actually on the console itself. So I'm going to just go to apply this and then OK. And there we go. So we now have a Sega Master System being controlled with a PS3 controller. So to make this screen a little bit bigger, all we're going to do, so if we go to video, we got window size. So you can make this bigger as a separate window or we can actually go to full screen. And there we have it. So it's not the greatest game in the world, but just as a tutorial, as you can see, things are working. So to exit the full screen, if I just press escape, and that's gonna take us back here. So that's master system covered. And whilst I'm here, I'm going to just go through a couple of other options with you. So we've got scan lines, which are currently on 0%. If I just go pretty extreme with scan lines, I can go to 100%, which is going to give us a real retro look. If I go back to video and scan lines, it's say 25% and so on and so forth. We've also got here an option of V-Sync. So V-Sync is going to eliminate that tear, screen tear in certain games. So there's that to consider. So something else you can do with this really cool emulator is if we go to full screen resolution, you can change your resolutions here, uh, dependent on the resolution output on your screen you're using. I'll leave that up to you. Okay, so that concludes the master system uh, segment of the Kega Fusion emulator. So let's just shut this down and roll on to the next part, which is going to be Game Gear. So of course Game Gear was a Sega portable system which kind of competed with the Nintendo Game Boy back in the day. I think it's quite clear who the winner was. Uh, so to load Game Gear games, what we're going to do is a similar process. So just go to load Game Gear ROM. And for Game Gear games, these work fine in a zipped format. So you don't need to worry about conventions such as SMS or GG or whatever. If you just left click on this game, And if you recall a second ago, we set up the controller. Uh, the controller was set up for Master System and Sega Game Gear. And as you can see, this is working fine. And always good. Uh, so again, with this, we can go to video. We can add scan lines if that's your thing. But it's not really for me, but I know a lot of people out there do like scan lines for that uh, ultimate retro look. We can also go to window size again. Uh, for smaller games such as this, for portable games, if you uh, stretch these games too much, they look very pixelated and blatantly stretched. So Game Gear games are clearly better running on a smaller window. So that's it for this section on the Sega Game Gear. So I'm going to just close this down and next up we have the Sega 32X. So uh, Sega 32X, it kind of well, it was a flop. Uh, it kind of came uh, towards a time and a very experimental time in history where the PlayStation and the Sega Saturn was almost on the horizon. You also had the Atari Jaguar. Uh, the 32X was just a cheap add-on. Uh, to try to enhance the Sega Mega Drive. Uh, if you're younger, the 32X was a unit you would push on top of the Mega Drive or Genesis if you're American and kind of enhance the hardware, add extra features and you'd buy dedicated games uh, which gave you 32-bit graphics. Uh, that's debatable. And for the 32X games here, uh, the naming conventions are relevant. So dot uh, 32x games uh, so if you've got a game if it comes in a zip folder you need to extract it and it's likely in a dot 32x format so if we just uh, double left click on 32x no bios are needed for 32x
And of course our controller's not working for this, if you remember a minute ago I configured the controller for Sega Master System and the Sega Game Gear. So it's going to be the same process again if we just go to options, if we go to second fig, if we go to controllers, and your top option here is a similar to the Master System Game Gear, we're just going to select the port, which is port 1 for player 1. And we got option here, so you can either have a 6 button pad or a 3 button pad. I'm going to just go for 3 button pad. And again, if we go to use, it's defaulted by keyboard, which isn't everyone's cup of tea. So just go down here, and my controller is the Xbox 360. If we go to define, again at the bottom here, it's going to tell you which key or which button on your controller to do what. So up, down, left, right, A, B, C, start, and we randomly got an X button and a Y button. <laughs> so however you feel fit to correspond with your controller you're using, just define it how you like. So apply, okay, and there we go. And if you check at the bottom left hand screen you'll see a little number here, this is uh, frames per second so this game is running at 60 frames per second which is a very very good rate of speed. And BC Racers is one of those games which is okay, it was just a very typical game of that time. So nothing to write home about, uh, just kind of a Mario Kart uh, rip-off clone type game. So again, if we go to video for the Sega Fruit 2X, uh, always keep V-Sync checked, reduce that screen tear. We can go full screen. So if you do choose to go to full screen, let me tell you something. We go to full screen resolution and we say select 1080p and then go to full screen. And this applies for every system. You're going to get a big lousy screen like this where it's obviously too big so you need to go back to video and change the resolution whichever resolution is applicable to your system. So just for this tutorial, I'm going to just leave it at 640 by 480. And now if I go back to full screen, we have a better image. So that's all good. So we escape to exit this. And it's about it for the Sega 32X. Of course, you can use scan lines on this too. But as you know, I don't really like scan lines. So that's about it for the Sega 32X. Just remember that Sega 32X requires the .32X naming convention, otherwise you wouldn't even be able to find it under your loading process. So let's just exit this and finally, and to some the most trickiest, I'm going to show you how to run Sega CD or Mega CD. So if we go to file and we go to load Sega CD image, my Sega CD game is located here, Sega CD. If I run this, double left click on it, and bear in mind, uh, this emulation is only gonna run .q files. So .q files often comes with bin files. If you're using CHD conventions types, uh, it's not gonna load it, won't even detect it just here, so they need to be in Q. So double left click, and it's saying, please configure USA BIOS. So what we need to do here is just simply go to options, set config, and if we go to Sega CD, it will show all of these BIOS files, which for some reason it's just there, uh, don't have all these. But if we locate the BIOS file on your system, mine is located on my desktop, so if I just go to browse under USA, because my game is a USA game. 
just go to browse and my file is located on my desktop so left click desktop and here is my USA BIOS and it's a .bin double left click apply OK and so we'll try that again so load Sega CD image double left click on the dot Q and there we go so we're instantly into the Sega CD menu press start and just a minute ago I configured this to run on 32x and Sega CD so my controller is also working on this And for the Sega CD, there's a little green box at the bottom here. Uh, that just simply indicates uh, the emulator treating it like it's a real CD inserted. So let's remember that .q files and .bin files are actually parts of a CD which has been extracted from the disc. So green obviously means it's been active. Here we go, here's our Sega CD game working. And of course you've got the same options there just like the other few I've just covered. We go to video, we can add scan lines. You can also go to full screen. And something really noticeable about Sega CD is that since games were on CD, you'll get a very good sound, a good stereo sound. There was obviously more room on the disc, um, which is the world we live in today to allow more data to be transferred to. So more data means better sound, everything. So it was a good move during that era to uh, move on to CDs, compact discs, rather than cartridges. So just escape. And you can also save and load states uh, with all of these systems, Master System, Game Gear. And it's a very simple process of if we just go to File, and if we go to Save State, left click, and that's saved. So say you're, you've got an emergency, you need to go out and you want to get back right where the action is. We just close this down, I'm going to show you this as an example. Close this down, open Fusion back up. Open the Sega CD game back up. It's a load to where I was just a second ago. All I'm going to do is go back to file, load, state, and there we go. We are now back in the action exactly where we left off a second ago. So that really is about it for uh, Kega Fusion. As you can see, it's a really capable and very awesome emulator covering several different Sega systems of yesteryear. So, if you need additional support on today's video or any other of my emulation tutorials, uh, my Patreon link is in the description. And uh, I just want to say I've got plenty more of these tutorials on the way. And thanks to the people supporting this series I'm doing at the moment, your best wishes means a lot to me. Uh, the channel is really going somewhere at the moment and I'm really proud of it. So, until next time, take care.